Hello and welcome to lesson one about the geography of ancient Greece. Uh, in this lesson we will cover what the physical geography of ancient Greece was like. Uh, in other words, what the land was like. And we will also cover what farming was like in Greece as a result of the physical geography of ancient Greece. There will be two of our vocabulary words used in this lesson. The first one is peninsula, and a peninsula is a body of land that is surrounded on three sides by water. Uh, and the example we have in today's picture is the Baja California Peninsula of Mexico, surrounded on three sides by water. This is the Pacific Ocean. Down here is Cabo San Lucas. And over here we have the Sea of Cortez. Uh, peninsulas often look like they're a finger or a thumb sticking out into the ocean or the sea. Uh, some other examples of peninsulas would be Florida, Korea, and uh, Mexico also has the Yucatan Peninsula, uh, which is what it's well known for. Uh, we also have the word archipelago, which is a chain or series of islands. Our chain of collection of islands, chain, series, collection, all are appropriate terms. Um, archipelagos that we know about here in America would be Hawaii and the Aleutian Islands of Alaska. And Puerto Rico is also part of the Caribbean archipelago. Our, uh, Puerto Rico is part of the United States. It has a commonwealth status. It's not a state, but it is part of the United States. So our first left side question for our Cornell notes is going to be, what is the geography of Greece like? So please take some time right now to write that question on the left side of your notes. Uh, in this case, it also could be your essential question at the top of your Cornell notes because both lessons have to do with the geography of Greece. So either one is appropriate. Um, whatever your teacher recommends. And as we look at Greece here, I'm actually going to switch to a larger map. This is a larger map of Greece. We see that it has a peninsula. This entire thing is a peninsula. And it also has lots and lots of islands, which definitely qualify it as an archipelago, both here in the Aegean Sea and over here in what we call the Ionian Sea. Both are smaller parts of the larger Mediterranean Sea, which is down here. Uh, you might even notice that this looks like it's an island, but it's actually a peninsula that comes off of the rest of Greece. So Greece is very unique geographically in that way. Here's the map we're going to work with in terms of our, our PowerPoint notes. First thing you need to know, like I just stated, is that mainland Greece, in other words the part of Greece that is connected to the rest of Europe, is a peninsula um, that sticks out from the southern part of Europe. And peninsula is our first vocabulary word, so it is underlined for your convenience and enjoyment. And as I also just stated, Greece is also an archipelago. You might want to say that a few times just to get used to saying it. Archipelago that contains hundreds of small islands. Not all of them show up on this map. Some of them are pretty small. Uh, Greece is also surrounded by three bodies of water. The Aegean Sea, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Ionian Sea. Uh, in some ways you could say the Aegean Sea and the Ionian Sea are part of the Mediterranean Sea, but they like to give them different names. And finally, uh, whenever you see brown on a map like this, it usually says that that place has lots of hills and mountains. And in the case of Greece, that is very true. Greece is filled with hills and mountains and uh, that provides a number of challenges for the people who live there. 
moving on to the next slide. Our next question, which we'll place on the left side of our Cornell notes, is why was farming challenging in Greece? I didn't put in Greece there because you can assume that, but if you want to write why was farming challenging in Greece, go for it. And if you look at these two pictures, they really kind of show the, the land and the terrain of Greece. It was not flat, and they had to be creative when they did their farming. You can tell just by looking at this, the land was very rocky, uh, meaning the soil was not in the best of condition. It was not great topsoil for growing food. Uh, water was scarce, and, and scarce is a good word for you to know. Uh, scarce means there's not very much of it, or scarce is an antonym for abundant, however you want to look at it. Not a lot of water in Greece. Uh, in terms of its climate, if you've ever been to Southern California, very similar. You have maybe three or four months out of the year where it rains. The rest of the year is very warm, hot, and dry, and things get pretty tender dry right before the rainy season kicks in. And if the rainy season doesn't come at all, droughts can be pretty severe. Uh, they built steps into the hills, just like this picture shows you right here, uh, to create flat spaces in order to grow food. Uh, some of the main crops they grew were wheat, barley, grapes, and olives. Uh, all of those are crops that don't necessarily require uh, a lot of water. They also grew fruit and nut trees, and those are both types of trees that don't require a lot of water. So they worked well in the climate of Greece. Um, they liked their honey in Greece, so they kept bees. They learned how to keep hives, uh, and that was a pretty important staple in their diet as well. Uh, staple means something that's a pretty important part of everyday diet. Like a staple for us would be bread, or in Mexico, a staple would be the tortilla. Uh, they also used sheep and goats a lot to graze on the land because sheep and goats were able to hold on to the sides of hills and mountains, whereas cows, oxen, and horses, not so much. So sheep and goats were a lot more useful to them. And food was so scarce that the city-states of Greece often went to war simply to fight for access to farmland and food. Uh, that is a sign of just how dry it was there and just how much food was a real issue for the ancient Greeks. This concludes part one of the geography of ancient Greece. Right now at the bottom of your Cornell notes, I would like you to write a summary that in three to five sentences tells us what the most important things you learned in this lesson are. The summary should be in your own words. It should not necessarily rewrite everything you've just learned, but should simply focus on the most important things you've just learned. And it is your way of going back, looking over the information, thinking about it, and putting it into your own words so that you'll remember it more come test time. Please do that now. This concludes Lesson 1 of the Geography of Ancient Greece. Mr. B, signing off.